EMS. Um, as you know, um, EMS is embedded in both SolarWorks and Inventor, but we're going to most likely concentrate on the um, on the uh, SolarWorks integration of EMS and show you how EMS handles and, and a magnet array, I mean, uh, analysis by using uh, that integration, how we can make the best use of that integration. Uh, Bill is the going to be the application engineer that's going to, I mean, do this part. So uh, I'm going to make Bill the presenter now, and Bill will start here for me. So Bill? Okay, thank you, Adam. Yeah, go ahead and make me the presenter. My pleasure. I'm going to make you the presenter. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, it's good to have you. So uh, today uh, I'm going to cover the, um, the way uh, how EMS handles uh, uh, magne magnet arrays. As you can see here, I have my model. I have uh, several arrays right there stacked uh, next to each other, and we'll be able to actually uh, analyze them and uh, see the magnetic field uh, throughout all of them. Uh, as Adam was saying, we're fully embedded adding inside uh, SolidWorks, so uh, everything you build inside SolidWorks, EMS is going to be able to see it and analyze it for you. Uh, we also, uh, the, the, uh, one of the advantages also we have is that we take full advantage of SolidWorks features, for example, SolidWorks motion or multi-configuration, and I will cover this uh, later on where we do uh, several configurations of the same design. For instance, if you look at this one here, and uh, as I change the configuration, for instance, here I, I change the, the, the distance between the magnets. So if I can go back here, you'll notice it got smaller. Okay. So um, uh, basically, as I said, any configuration, any any analysis, any design you put inside SolidWorks, EMS can be able to see it and analyze it for you automatically. No need for you to import, export, uh, deal with non-native geometries, or uh, which uh, that way your life becomes much easier when you're dealing with a native part within the SOLIDWORKS environment. So you can optimize and do your what-if scenarios uh, with a mouse click, just very easy. Um, okay, uh, so the first step is to create a study or a design scenario. Uh, we have five solvers that you can choose from. We have the magnetostatic, electrostatic, electric conduction, AC magnetic, and transient magnetic. Depending on what you're trying to do and depending on the application you're dealing with, you would decide which one, uh, uh, which one, which one of these solvers you, you, you're going to choose. In today's example, it's going to be the magnetostatic because that's the best one that handles uh, magnetic fields generated by DC currents or by uh, permanent magnets. And it's, uh, it's a fairly popular module too. Uh, we have also the thermal analysis uh, module. This is an extra one that we can add if you want to see the temperature uh, variation. And we have the motion analysis. If you have any moving magnets and you want to see the interaction between moving magnets, uh, you can set up, define your motion inside SOLIDWORKS motion, and then you just couple to it right from here. Uh, so uh, those are the uh, seven, the five basic modules and the two extra ones that uh, EMS has. Uh, for those of you now, if I create my study here and my magnetostatic study, those of you who are familiar with SOLIDWORKS simulation, you'll notice that uh, we're very similar. Our manager tree is very similar to that of SOLIDWORKS simulation, and that's one of the reasons why we're a gold certified product. So uh, uh, here, solids, you define all the material for your components. So for instance, if I want to define material for my magnets, I have here a material library. Uh, very comprehensive, very rich, has most of the commonly used materials there. Uh, however, 
uh, case if I want to modify certain material or I want to add or change or have, I have custom material, EMS allows you to create your own material library that you can save and load and you can use from one project to the other. So uh, very easy, you can select a material here uh, for your component. You can drag and drop if two components have the same material. You can also uh, multi-select. So uh, uh, you got all of those. Um, so uh, very easy, very handy, very quick. Uh, you can also specify for magnets. Obviously, you need to specify the cursivity direction. So you can use global coordinate system or local coordinate system. You know, sometimes uh, when you have a moving magnet rotating around and you need your cursivity to rotate with a magnet, it would be a good idea to define a local coordinate system and use that so that the, uh, the, the, the cursivity doesn't change as your magnet uh, rotates. Uh, you can do Cartesian, cylindrical, or spherical coordinate systems. And then you can change the orientation along which axis you want your cursivity to be. So it's very easy, very quick. Um, also, if you're interested in studying the force on a particular part, you can select that. So you can select the parts where you want to see the force. Um, Okay, so uh, you can do that here manually, or you can uh, actually click on it. Uh, you can click on any of them. Um, it's also here worth noticing that, uh, uh, unlike mechanical simulations, uh, electromagnetic simulation need to happen within an airbox because. Uh, the reason for that is in mechanical simulation, all the uh, all the forces and all the strains and all that, they happen within the structure itself. In electromagnetic simulation, a significant portion, a significant portion of the uh, of the uh, magnetic field propagate actually in the air surrounding your structure. So it's very important that you model that air to capture that field and account for it because we cannot simply ignore it. I'm just going to hide the air just for a better view and simplicity, but it's there, it's uh, being analyzed. Okay. Um, right, so uh, we got that. And then the last step in the pre-analysis is the... Uh, uh, is creating the mesh, and when creating the mesh, we have two options. We have the uh, the mesh control. Basically, what the mesh control does, it allows you to manually select certain components uh, that you think are relevant and important and cannot be ignored. And those components, you can actually uh, um, uh, refine the mesh there. So that way, you get the best of both worlds. You get precision and speed and uh, at the same time because if you want in other softwares if you want precision you have to sacrifice speed now with the mesh control option you don't have to because you have both of them there so you can you can precise where you uh, get, do precision where you need it and then uh, still have fast simulations and this is how the uh, mesh structure would look like Okay, so this is my meshed magnets, and this is how they would look like. Okay. Uh, after meshing EMS, uh, you right-click and hit Run. And after running, EMS will generate a series of result folders for you. Okay. So uh, here, for instance, you got the energy for the results table. Uh, also, if you would like to have the force, if you specify the force component, the force would be there too. Uh, we got the magnetic flux density, so we can plot that in 3D or 2D format. So, for instance, if I do here in 3D, we can choose the uh, uh, fringe plot or vector plot. Let's say I want to see the uh, vector lines, so it's good to do a vector plot there. 
So now here I'll be able to actually see the vector lines and the uh, the variation and also again as I mentioned earlier we take full advantage of all these SOLIDWORKS features so uh, any piece, that, any part that we hide or isolate, uh, any part that we hide will not show up on the uh, plot so here for instance if I want to see my field in the air I need to go back and show that air box again Okay, so if I do that And now if I double click again on that plot, it will automatically update. Okay. Sorry, my computer is a little bit slow. You did. Unmuted. Okay, so, uh, sorry. Uh, all right, so here, like, if I have my, uh, yeah, if I want to see my vector lines in the, uh, in the air surrounding the structure, uh, all I need to do is I show the air and it's right there, so uh, I have the field all over, and I can play with the um, uh, chart option if I want to see more details. So uh, I can manually manipulate the scale. So if I want to see more, I want to focus more on what's happening in the air around the uh, around my structure. I can play with the scale. Uh, okay, and so uh, you can see there the vector lines, and you have several features here you can play with. Let's say the probing, for instance, you can click anywhere and it's going to display the values for you. Okay, So you can keep clicking, you click on all the spots we clicked at are right here on this chart with the X, Y, Z coordinate of all the pro points, the node number and the value at that node. You can plot those in a 2D format or you can also save them as an Excel or a TXT uh, file. Uh, you can also do uh, listing, basically listing would uh, load every single node in the structure and then it would give you the X, Y, Z coordinate of that node and the value of that node. So all the nodes are here and you can actually save them as uh, an Excel or a, a TXT file for any further processing. You can take them as an input for uh, some other uh, software. Uh, also, uh, if you want to see, uh, let, me, uh, let me go ahead and hide the air again. You can also decide if you want to see the, uh, uh, do a 3D plot, a fringe plot, like a, a scale uh, instead of vectors, okay? And so here you'll have it in a scalar format, so you can see actually the variation of the magnitude within the magnet itself. And so uh, uh, with this also you have several manipulations you can do, let's say if you want to change the scaling also you can uh, do that. Okay, So you can play with the scaling to uh, see how, uh, or you can just stick to show min max. Uh, you can also do uh, section clipping, basically cut through your structure and look inside, see what's happening inside the structure. Now the cut plane you can use uh, a cursor to drag it to any position in the structure. You can change the orientation of the cut plane. You can do an inside out to decide which side of the plane you want to plot. Okay. Again, you can change the orientation here too. Let's 
Same thing you can always do, do an inside out. Sorry. Is this SolidWorks 12 or 13? Uh, right now I'm using 12, but I mean the 13 is also out there and you can, uh, uh, you can use that. So uh, we are compatible with both. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. So yeah. um, sorry for that. Uh, Sorry for that. So as I said, we uh, we have the option of uh, also uh, uh, section clipping, and then uh, okay. So uh, as I mentioned, so you can keep changing the orientation of the uh, plane. You can uh, you can change the angle as well, the uh, orientation angle. Uh, okay, so for instance, if I do 20 degrees here, so you can look at, do your cut at an angle. Sometimes you have certain structures where actually, now in this case, it's simple. Uh, it's like uh, uh, symmetric and uh, uh, orthogonal, but sometimes you might have uh, structures where you need, to, you need to look at your results at an angle. So you have that flexibility. You can do that, or you can just back here you can do um, you can do plot on section only also so uh, it would do a 2d plot for you on a planar plot uh, you can superimpose more than one section you can uh, go up to six actually uh, you can also do uh, iso clipping Basically, isoclipping, what it does, it, 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 it plots all the spots in your, in your structure that have the same value. And you can decide that value using this cursor. This is very handy when you're looking for minimums and maximums. So uh, that way, you know, you keep that in mind when you're, uh, when you're designing. You take that into account. You can also, again, superimpose more than one isoclipping surface. Okay, so uh, again, you can go up to uh, six of them. Um, you can uh, still also do the uh, probing feature that we did earlier with the vectors. Again, you have them here in a chart that you can save uh, as an Excel or a TXT file. Uh, same thing, the listing. It will bring every node in your structure and then uh, the values of that node, the XYZ coordinates. Uh, okay. Uh, also, uh, you can take advantage of the isolate feature of SolidWorks. So, for instance, if I isolate this magnet and then I double click here on that plot, it will only plot that magnet for me and it will adjust the scaling automatically. It will adjust the scaling to, uh, to, what's, uh, to the minimums and maximum of that particular magnet. And again, we can still do that same manipulation, uh, say section clipping of that magnet. So if I want to see the inside of the magnet, uh, if I want to tilt the angle, I can tilt it also along the other axis. So, uh, okay. 
and uh, same manipulation here, the same uh, process, we can do that too. So I'm going to exit isolate here, and then also um, sometimes you'll be uh, interested in doing uh, 2D plots, uh, uh, having numeric values. And for that, we can do a 2D plot. With a 2D plot, you can actually request, uh, select any two points in the structure. For instance, let's say I select this one and that one. EMS will go along the straight line connecting those two points. It's going to break it into the number of samples I specify here. And then it's going to do the uh, magnetic flux density for me along that straight line connecting those two points. So you can see here the variations as we go across each magnet. Uh, you have a cursor here where you can read the values at any position. Okay. Uh, you have it here in a chart that you can save as Excel or a TXT file. Uh, of course, you can export this result once it's saved. To your, uh, can use that as an input for some other software. Um, let's say, for example, now I've done all this and I want to start uh, analyzing some what-if scenarios, okay? So uh, I want to change uh, my magnets. Let's say, for instance, here I used uh, uh, cast 5. I can, let's say, I want to see if I want to use neodymium or if I want to use uh, uh, samarium cobalt or any other magnet or if I want to even change the configuration change so a uh, few what if scenarios that we can uh, we can address here and uh, uh, we'll be able to show you actually how easy and how straightforward EMS can handle this kind of uh, uh, setup so now I've done all of this I did my corrosivity directions my magnet material my mesh everything I don't want to go through the process again uh, but I want to do some uh, what if scenarios and I want to save my results. I don't want to lose the results that I've, uh, that I've had uh, before. So what you can do is you can drag and drop the study. Give it a new name. So let's say scenario 2. And then say OK. okay. Now you notice here EMS copy pasted everything for me from the other study. So the material the mesh, uh, even the results. Now what I can do here, I can come over here, let's say the magnets here, I used uh, cast 5, I want to see if I use neodymium what happens. So I select all my magnets, apply material, and then I change my permanent magnet to neodymium 42. Okay. Okay, and then uh, what I do here now, uh, EMS preserved all the details, okay, including the uh, corrosivity direction, the uh, uh, everything. I just changed the parameter that I requested to change, so I don't have to go through the process again. Now all I need to do is right click here and run this scenario, okay. Uh, what happens here, it's only going to run this study. So every other study that I have is sitting there safe, untouched. So I don't lose my results. Now, sometimes the question comes in mind, what if I have uh, 10 or 15 scenarios and I want to run them? Uh, do I have to wait uh, until each one is done and run one by one? No. What you can do in that case, what you can do is right click here and say run all studies and EMS will just go at them one after the other. So I can, I can set up 10 or 15 studies, you know, before I go to lunch, and then ask EMS to run them one after the other, and then when I come back, it's ready. Now, when it gets even more interesting is here, for instance, I did this. I, uh, I ran it with samarium, cobalt, and neodymium. And, uh, and then what I can do here, when I do that, 2D plot I told you about earlier. So if I choose these two points, for instance, from here to there, I can do 200 samples. So what EMS is going to do is going to go along the straight line, compare, connecting those two points, uh, break it into 200 steps or samples, 
and give me the magnetic flux density at each one. However, what I can do also extra, where, and this is where it comes, becomes really interesting, is I can compare results between studies. So if I select compare results here, you see here it's going to give me the option of all the studies that I've defined. So I can look at the samarium cobalt and at the neodymium. And then when I say OK, EMS is actually going to bring all the plots from all of those studies into one in, in one figure. Sorry. Okay. So here I have the, as you can see on the legend here, so study one, that's the one with the cast five, that's the blue uh, line right there. The red line is the samarium cobalt and the green line is the neodymium. And so now I can actually see the effect of what uh, my what if scenarios on the same figure and you can use your cursors here to read the values at any position, you have them right there. And so uh, you can use a cursor to read the values. And of course, you have them also in a chart here that you can save as an, as an Excel or a TXT file. You can also take that file as an input in some other software. Uh, and not only that, I also have the uh, the option of doing uh, a what if scenario not only on the material or the setup the pre analysis the process I can also do what if scenario on configurations so what I do here I go inside SolidWorks I define my different configurations and then what I do here I come over here again copy paste by drag dropping. I'll call this uh, config2. And here, as you can see, it's, it's asking me for the SolidWorks configuration to use. So here I have a list of all the configurations that I've defined are listed in here. So here I want to do configuration2. Oh, sorry, I chose the wrong name. Okay, yeah, I should change the name. Uh, okay, all right, and then I do configuration two, and then I say okay. Notice here, uh, yeah, exactly. So EMS actually copy pasted everything for me from this. Uh, from uh, the other study and automatically activated the new configuration where I space out the magnets a little bit and then uh, it copy pasted everything so I don't have to go through the process again one more time and again even with configurations I can stack several studies and then I can say run all of them so now I can either run this configuration alone or I can run all of them and by running this it will automatically remesh and rerun. So uh, we'll take care of it for you automatically. And again, you will be able to actually analyze it and see the variations there. For instance, if I do my vector plot here, okay. so now you can actually see how my vectors would look like as I space them away from each other. Okay. Uh, again, the same manipulations. Uh, we can do uh, section clipping and cut through the structure, change the orientation of the cut plane inside out. And so, uh, okay. Uh, and also, again, as I mentioned earlier, even even in the uh, 2D, uh, in the 2D scenario, I can actually ask it to compare between configurations. Okay. So I can uh, request that it compares with study one. 
and now I see I can see as I space away my magnets what happens to my magnetic flux density. Okay, you notice here now as they spaced away, this is the variation and this is the kind of effect it's going to have on my uh, on my uh, magnetic flux density. And again, I can use a cursor here to read the values. I have a list view there. I can check, use those, save them as an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, okay, and also uh, another way, the, the, the what-if scenarios, they don't have to be like spacing or changing diameters only. You can decide, let's say you want to reduce magnets, move magnets, change shapes of certain magnets. For instance, here I have this, uh, this scenario where I just removed a couple magnets. Okay, so here if I hide the airbox again. Okay, so here in this scenario, all I did is I just, there was a magnet here and a magnet there that I just removed and decided to do a configuration where I simply remove those. And then, again, I'll be able to plot this uh, magnetic flux density. Uh, okay, so you can see the empty spots there in the plot. Um, you can also do a uh, you can also do a 2D plot. Again, if I go, let's say, from this point to that point, 200 samples. Okay, and then I can compare results between that and study one here. Okay, so uh, you notice there as the um, the uh, missing magnet. You notice here in the uh, in the middle where there are those two uh, missing magnets. I don't have those peaks in there, and so uh, you can see the effect. Uh, let me make another comparison just quickly. Okay, from here to there. So, uh, yeah, right there. So here, yeah, in, in this case, uh, uh, because I preserved the same type of magnet, all I did, I just removed two of them. And you can notice here the, the flatness in there due to the absence of those two magnets. And so the, the reduction, of the, the, the uh, less field that we have in there, so... Uh, uh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, you know, the way we can manipulate and do our what-if scenarios. Uh, again, as I said, here we have them in a chart that we can save. Um, we can also do uh, uh, one of the other features that uh, EMS has is the uh, reports feature. Basically, after you generated all these figures, you don't have to go through the process again. EMS actually, uh, through, sorry, through the process of copy pasting every plot to put in a report, EMS actually does that for you automatically. You can upload the company logo, you can have your model there, you can set up the date and the choose the uh, the form. Sorry, you can choose the format of your report, whether Microsoft Word or. Uh, or uh, HTML, and when you hit OK, 
as you can see here, AMS is just copy pasting and automatically copy pasting everything for me from that study and then putting them in one nice report, uh, a word report uh, that would come uh, uh, very accessible. Everybody can can share this report because they don't need uh, they do not need to have EMS or SOLIDWORKS license in order for them to view the report. Anybody who has access to Word can view the report. You can convert it into PDF. You can put it on a website. You can manipulate it any way, uh, uh, any way you want. So uh, it's it's very flexible, and we try to make your life as easy as possible. And so uh, instead of you having to go in and copy-paste each plot manually, you can actually have EMS do that for you. And uh, yeah. And so now, yeah, here the logo we uploaded, uh, set up the material, the model, the mesh model, the regular the view of the model. All the material property and the pre-analysis setup and the results table, uh, all the figures that we've generated have been copy-pasted in here. Okay, all the, uh, yeah, all the graphs that we did have been automatically copy-pasted, so you don't have to go through the process of actually manually produce in those graphs. Uh, also, uh, there is another uh, example I wanted to show really quick that involves motion and force. I'm very, oh yeah, and uh, before I do that actually, uh, there is one more thing I actually I want to show. Is, uh, for instance, let's say I want to see now my magnetic flux density away from the magnet, not exactly at the uh, not inside the magnet or uh, across the magnets. I want to see it a little bit above the magnets. What I can do here, I can use this plane, for instance, as a, I can insert a reference geometry, a plane that is parallel to this plane, and I can decide how high I want it to be. Let's say, uh, yeah, plane about there. Okay, and then. What I can do is, I can use that as my sketching plane. Okay, and so now I have my circle right above my magnets. I want to insert some reference points. Okay, on that sketch evenly distributed. So uh, I can insert as many points as I need. As you can see, the purple points there. The more points I put, the more accurate it's going to get. So for instance, if I do, let's say, 100 points, those are my points. Now I'm still inserting in SOLIDWORKS. I'm pretty sure you guys are all familiar with this. So uh, this is just the way you define your reference geometry points just in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, and uh, remember again, this is in the post-processing. So uh, even if I missed in the pre-processing and I didn't do it, I can still I can still do that in the post-processing, and it would still read the results for me. Okay. So now it actually did the uh, insert the points. So now now if I do a 2D plot, I can simply well I can manually select any of these points, or I can just ask it to import all of those points. For me. Okay, so now it did bring all those points, and then I can just say yes, and it will plot the magnetic flux density along that line that I've specified. And you can actually look there and see at the magnetic flux density as I move along that circle that I've defined. Again, I have a cursor here. I can read those values. I have them in a list here that I can save as Excel or TXT file. Uh, or 
so you can always uh, you know do all the sorts of manipulations and uh, uh, variation that I need to do um, So um, it's, it's it's very uh, very flexible, very straightforward on the way in the way it uh, actually handles these kind of applications. Also, I can do comparative plots the way I did before. So uh, I can uh, even with those figures, with those uh, points, I can bring them and I can have them compare two studies with uh, all the what if scenarios at that level. And uh, again. I have them in a chart here that I can save as Excel or TXT. So it's it's pretty flexible, pretty straightforward in the way it handles this kind of application. Uh, I'm just going to move to another model that I have, uh, just to show you the motion aspect here. Uh, in here, I have another magnet that is used as a switch. So the the yellow ones that you're looking at here, these two are uh, ferromagnetic plates. These two are two magnets that I'm moving along, and uh, I'm studying the force between in this air gap between these two ferrous plates. Uh, I define a motion here inside SolidWorks motion. Uh, Let me speed that up a little bit. So, uh, so here I define a motion inside SolidWorks motion just to uh, uh, to see as my magnet moves what happens to my magnetic flux density there. Uh, and again, in my study here, when I define the study, I use the motion module I told you about earlier, and I coupled it to that. Uh, SolidWorks motion analysis. And now what I can do when I do my uh, 3D plots, let me do my vector plot there. When I do my 3D plots here, I can actually animate. And it's, it's an extra feature that we have now because we're involved with motion and all that. We can actually animate and see the variations there. So now you can see the magnetic flux density as my magnet moves. And you can see here the the strength and uh, of the uh, of the flux in that air gap. Okay. Um, also here in the results table because we've asked it to compute the force, we can actually see the force there. Uh, and actually plot it as a, as a function of the uh, of time. As my time varies, you can see the force, the force amplitude here, and this is negative. So the force amplitude gets it to a maximum where the magnet is right above the air gap, and then goes back up again. And so you can actually see that, and you can uh, analyze it. You have the cursor here to read all the values. And you have it in a chart that you can save as Excel or TXT for any uh, for any uh, further processing there. Uh, so um, yeah, I believe I've covered most of the aspects. And uh, uh, right now, uh, I would open up uh, the uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I would open up the floor to questions, but just before that, I want to explain here, uh, just as I showed you, the uh, force here is negative, just because uh, the y direction is pointing this way, and so our uh, and our magnet is exerting force downwards, so that explains the negative sign there. But uh, uh, other than that. Uh, uh, the magnitude, you can notice it's uh, the amplitude of the force increases as the magnet goes right above the uh, air gap. 
And with that, I will uh, conclude my presentation. And then if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box. I'll be more than happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have. Okay, uh, the question is how to define uh, a corrosivity direction in a magnet in motion. Uh, okay, so here um, what happens is uh, in this case for instance, uh, so let's say this magnet one here, I can do my uh, I can do my corrosivity direction here. Again, as I said, uh, either in, in a global uh, coordinate system or in a local. Now, in this case, my magnet is moving along this axis. So as it moves, it, nothing is going to happen to my corrosivity. And so I can use a global coordinate system and define my corrosivity. So if you can look here, the, the, the purple arrows are my uh, corrosivity um, direction. And so I can change the orientation there. I can change it along whichever axis I want. Uh, if I have a rotating magnet where, uh, as the rotation happens, I risk uh, uh, losing the uh, corrosivity uh, of interest, well, in that case, what you do is you do a, a local coordinate system that you attach to the magnet so that that local coordinate system is referenced with respect to the magnet and it moves with the magnets and it changes orientation as the magnet changes orientation and so your corrosivity will always be preserved and you don't have to, uh, to actually uh, worry about that. Any other questions? Is it possible to see the maximum of the field? Okay. Uh, well, in, in that we have uh, we have uh, two options. Uh, one is we can uh, we can uh, plot the field here in a fringe format and then do an isoclipping, and that way we can actually see where the field is maximum by taking it here to the highest level. Okay, so uh, you can actually uh, you can actually uh, do that and so you'll see it and you can even animate that and so you'll be able to uh, to see it as it moves, as the magnet moves what happens to the maximum there. You can see the variations there. Uh, uh, if uh, The other question is, uh, if I want to see the coordinate of the maximum, What's the, uh, where is it located in my maximum? What I can do is, in the magnetic flux density here, the plot, what I can do is I can do a listing, and then I can save this to Excel, and I have it in there, and I can find where the maximum there, and I'll have the coordinate exactly of that point that has maximum. So uh, uh, that is also something that we, uh, we can do.
So uh, any other questions? Okay, so I guess uh, if there are no questions, then uh, I'll just uh, conclude my we my webinar here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, it was nice having you, and uh, hopefully we can see you in uh, future webinars. Uh, if you have any technical questions, please feel free to uh, email me at uh, uh, bill at emworks dot com. I'm writing that down in the uh, in the chat box. If you have any uh, uh, if you have any commercial questions, uh, you can forward them to Adam at emworks dot com. Uh, and so uh, I've written both of them in the chat box here, so you can uh, have access to both of them. If you have any question, technical question, feel free to contact me, or if you have commercial question, contact Adam. Uh, was nice having you. Thank you for attending, and uh, you all have. Uh, I would like to add. Excuse me, Bill, to interrupt. I'd like to add that this webinar is recorded. It's going to be available on our website, www.emworks.com, under the uh, webinars. Uh, section and and you go to also archive so basically go to the website webinar section archive and you'll see this I mean uh, I mean uh, webinar posted there the video you can look at it direct or you can download it and feel free to uh, to do that um, again thank you all gentlemen we appreciate uh, I mean uh, every single minute of your time we did enjoy every single minute with you you all have a great afternoon and uh, rest of uh, I mean uh, a productive rest of the day and uh, we're coming up on the